Hey, what's up guys, Aaron here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode number 49 today for the Dutch Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A very dramatic race at the Chinese GP, and uh, we have four different winners now in four races. Can we have a fifth one here, potentially, or could it be a strong one for us? Because remember, this time last season, Season 2, this was the turning point for us. This is where our car finally looked like the final fastest car on track, let alone the R&D shot, and it was it went really well. We had a race-long battle between myself and Science. In the end, Science was the one that won out, so I have some unfinished business here at, uh, at Zandvoort, really, in a way, but it seems like this circuit really suits the FOM car, the My Team car that all of us have as players versus the AI team, so I think this could be another strong one. And of course, now our teammate is the home favourite, the Dutchman, Max Verstappen, so I'm sure he'll be gunning for it, so potentially we have another teammate battle for first place here if our car is the fastest of course at China last time out very strangely even though we're technically right up there with Mercedes on the R&D chart at China we lacked a lot of race pace I only got through into the podium position well due to that you know spoiler alert massive kerfuffle in the pit lane where I you know somehow ended up crashing into Bottas uh, causing a virtual safety car and actually gained from that and jumped up a few positions so we'll see about that but we do have those two error upgrades that have come in. We purchased those uh, two episodes ago, I think it was. So we've got a front and rear major downforce upgrade for this week in, weekend. So hopefully that'll help us navigate the extra ultimate power upgrade we had earlier uh, through the corners a bit better because I felt like we were lacking a little bit of downforce just a tad at Hanoi and at China uh, to control that power a little bit better in the corners. But going into the race weekend, uh, we are looking very strong with those upgrades, but Mercedes ought to continue to upgrade. So even though Merck ha have uh, had a dismal season, Season. Technically, they are still improving their car, but others are also improving. And now McLaren continue to improve their car, along with Ferrari as well, with upgrades there as well, uh, with Red Bull 2. And uh, so McLaren continue their upward trend, and they're still technically now uh, ahead of Red Bull and Ferrari. So, well, I mean, we saw Red Bull win their first race of the season just last episode with Sainz. So could we see McLaren now randomly turning up here and fighting at the sharp end? That'd be quite intriguing, because that'd be a, a kind of fifth team in the kind of mix of things. Um, and it remains to be seen if Mercedes can actually get their foot on in this season and actually be where the R&D chart's saying they're meant to be. They've just had a lot of bad luck, I guess, and also them as AI drivers, especially Hamilton's AI, just not been driving too well. So a lot of different questions and still so many things unanswered after four very different and crazy races, I think you'll agree with me. But that's what's making me really look forward to this one, and if we're on pace, I think we can have another mega scrap with potentially Verstappen at his home GP for the race win. But first and foremost, we have to get through those crucial qualifying sessions. So we enter Saturday into Q1. Sunny at the moment. It is going to be raining though, apparently, towards the end of today. So we might have rain in Q3 and maybe the end of Q2 even. So need to watch out for that. But right now, it's just about getting through into that second part of qualifying. As per usual, I was massively off my teammate and many others, but we make it through. But uh, I'm not too concerned as usual because it just it's a case of, I think, the track rubbering in and also me speeding up as we go through the sessions. But now it gets a little bit interesting because as I said, the rain is on the way. You can see the clouds have started to come over the circuit uh, and we're on a early lap here in Q2. We've gone straight out because I have a hunch there might be some rain just at the end of this session. So I don't, I don't want to leave it to chance. I want to get the lap in. That will get me through into the top 10 shootout straight away because otherwise we'll just be a little bit too much under pressure. And uh, God forbid we have enough of that anyway uh, on ourselves uh, during the races and whatnot. So across the line, I thought it was a pretty decent lap time. They're splitting the two Mercedes cars of Bottas and Hamilton. Although, to be fair, that doesn't say a lot because the Mercs have been a little bit off pace. Uh, at the end of it, uh, in the middle of the session, this is, we're down to P7. Verstappen tops the timesheet again. So Max is looking really strong here at his home GP. Shock horror. Uh, in our car, so I think we're going to have a big fight if we want to try and get to the sharp end in qualifying here, but you can see the rain is coming out and a load of people went out despite the rain starting to fall, so I was a little bit worried for a second there that I thought I may have messed it up, I should have gone out for a second run, alas, no one did improve their lap times, and that means people like Sainz, last race's race winner, he is knocked out that is a disaster for him and Red Bull 
They try to be too clever. Getting through onto a set of medium tires hasn't worked out for them. Uh, and he's out of this part of qualifying. So uh, the two McLarens looking very strong. Obviously, as I uh, alluded to, you know, they're ahead of Red Bull and Ferrari on the R&D shot. And those two teams have won races so far this season. So I wouldn't be surprised to see McLaren turn up like that in Q3. The difference is, though, into Q3, it is now intermediate condition. So the form book is out the window. It's all about what we can do in this one session. This is all our first running on this circuit in these conditions, at least in this season. So I fueled up the car for two laps in a row. And uh, you're going to see, basically, that was the end of my first lap into my second lap. This is now. And straight away, we're going to gain so much time just because of the confidence you gain doing two laps in a row. You suss out where you can accelerate, where you can break, how early and how uh, kind of, you know, harshly can turn in because obviously uh, sometimes a too uh, aggressive steering angle off offsets the car a little bit. So as we come through now, the last bend, the back curve and across the line, it's about over seven tenths gained and that will get us provisional pole position right now by about a tenth or so to Verstappen. So I was really worried. I have no I had nothing to, uh, you know, show to match Verstappen in the dry, but in the wet and the playing field has very much been leveled. So right now we're on provisional pole. Verstappen second, just ahead of the likes of Norris and Ricardo doing a great job in the McLaren and in the Red Bull. Of course, Ricardo so far has been trounced by Sainz, so this is a good opportunity for Ricardo to really show what he's made of in that second Red Bull car, whilst his teammate is sat out of this session. And so far, I've got to say the Ferraris aren't looking too strong. Leclerc so far has put in a really poor lap time, although at the end of this session, we go out again, but uh, it started to rain a lot more. The rain's now a lot heavier, the track's a lot wetter, so I can improve my lap time. No one really Really seems to be improving the lap time. So we come in and just park it up here. And I think that's going to be it. It's a very anticlimactic end to the session. But there it is. Pole position at the Dutch GP against our Dutch teammate Max Verstappen. That's going to really irk him after having so much pace in Q1 and Q2. But the rain for once has come in my favour and levelled the playing field. And I've, I've come out and just basically just done the job there. So really happy with that. Pole position. Norris has done a great job to get it on the second row, I must say, in the McLaren. To be fair, also Ocon is right there on the next row. So that's not just, you know, fake pace. McLaren are really there. And again, Mercedes struggling, but not as much as Leclerc in the Ferrari. He's P10, way off the pace. Outqualified by his more, way more junior and uh, inexperienced teammate, Nick De Vries there, the F2 driver debuting in this season. Um, so he's got a lot to answer for, the championship leader. So it's going to be a really spicy race with maybe some people coming back through the field, a la Leclerc and Sainz. And we're at the sharp end, 1-2. Could it be a 1-2 in the race? Let's see. Let's go to the green. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and 4 to the left. The main straight is 678 metres long and heads into turn 1, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Why don't we start by talking about Carlos Sainz? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. It's the owner driver in pole position then and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Ricardo, Esteban Ocon, and Hamilton, De Vries, Bottas, Stroll, and Charles Leclerc, Albon, Sainz, Sergio Perez, and Kvyat, Gasly, Magnussen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and George Russell, Aitken, Grosjean, Matsushita, and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so for what is only the, uh, I think, third or second time ever in my My Team career so far, I don't know what the stats are. Maybe one of you guys know how many times I've been on pole. I don't think it's been very often, as you guys know. I'm more of a racer than a qualifier. So we don't often get to see just no one apart from the safety guard ahead of us on the grid. But that's the view we've got today. Very overcast. Hopefully the rain, well, actually, I, I wouldn't mind if the rain came because that's where we equalized Verstappen and actually managed to out qualify him. So if the rain did come, I wouldn't be too bothered. It actually helped us 
us out. But um, I think for a more kind of calmer race, if the rain stays away, that'll also work out for us. And hopefully we can translate that pace we were maybe starting to get in Q2 and into Q3. Maybe we can translate that to actual pure dry pace. The only worry is I don't know, you know, what that session would have been like in the dry. Whether Verstappen would have trounced me the same way he did in Q Q2 and Q1. So we've just got to go uh, in, kind of with a stab into the unknown and just see how it goes. It's going to be a one-stop, unfortunately. A very bland strategy from everyone involved. If you're on the softs or the mediums at the start, just go to the set of hard tyres and go to the end of the Grand Prix. So in that kind of way, we can't do anything clever with the race strap, but can we do anything just to, you know, block off Verstappen and keep him at bay uh, and try and rectify what we couldn't do here this time last season where we lost to our then teammate Sainz after such a long, long race battle. Well, here we go. We're going to find out in just a second if we can as we're going to go to this race start. Five red lights at the Dutch Grand Prix from pole position and the lights are out straight away and it's an okay start for us. A decent one for Verstappen to be fair as he pressurizes us into turn one. Lando Norris with the huge dive on the outside. And I think he actually might try and overtake Verstappen there. We have to go defensive against our fellow Brits. And we've uh, maintained the first place position into the next section. But look at Lando go. And he's up into P2 in the McLaren. It's 2-4 for McLaren as Ocon has made a cracking start. And is ahead of Ricardo right now. So decent stuff. And Lando actually pressurizing us into the next right-hander. We've got a bit wide. Bit of understeer kicks in. And there's some contact at Lando. Oh my god. Massive crash. Massive crash for the McLaren guys, and both of them may be out of this Grand Prix. Ocon certainly is, and for the first time in a long time, the full core safety car is out in our My Team career mode. It has been a very, very long time since we've seen this super rare uh, uh, scenario come out. I think the last time we had a safety car was season two at Hanoi, so it's been a long, long while. Really has been a rare event for us in our career mode, at least. Maybe not for some of you guys at home, but uh, this was the start then by Lando Norris. Amazing execution there. Great dive bombs to get Verstappen. So GG's. And then here it was a very awkward situation. He got a really good run at me into this next right-hander. I went a little bit wide with the understeer. Obviously heavy fuel. Not used to the turn in here. Lando goes for the move. It's audacious. But it's just the tiniest of taps there. I feel like that's a massive racing incident. Like, I don't know what... You know, I, I could have given him some more room. But that would have been me basically running myself off the road. I was taking the normal sort of racing line I was taking. Having gone that wide. I feel like Lando probably should have just not got his nose in a little bit too aggressively like that. And then look at that in slow-mo. Chaos ensues. Hamilton has got caught up in it. It's so unlucky there for the Brit and the Mercedes car to once again get some more bad luck in this horrendous season of his. But oh, what a shame there. Lando's rear end takes out Ocon. So uh, Norris takes out his own teammate uh, through no fault of his own. To be fair, look at this. Verstappen was very lucky not to be taken out as well because he got a good old clout on the rear end. And Ricardo did some avoiding action here. But look, <laughs> look at that. Comically, De Vries shoots through and the Ferrari man gets up into P3 and Ricardo has to settle to be being overtaken by the Ferrari. And then this is uh, Hamilton and it's just more bad luck for Lewis Hamilton. He gets caught up, boxed in, and loses a bit of his front wing, I think, as well. So it's going to be probably another very tough race for uh, for Lewis Hamilton. And even, indeed, Bottas, who's down the order in traffic. But he's gained some places from this. But he's still a 1-2, then, behind this safety car. De Vries in the Ferrari in third place. Then Ricardo, Bottas, Leclerc, Sainz. So Sainz and Leclerc have massively gained from both McLarens being down the order. I believe Lando Norris is still in this race. Lock on out though, but a load of people jumping others due to that chaos there. But yeah, I feel like that was a that, but yeah, I feel like that was a racing incident. Yes, it's very harsh on Norris, very unlucky, but you know, it was just a case of I naturally went wide due to the understeer and the heavy fuel. But you know, if I was in Lando's shoes, I definitely wouldn't have got my nose down the inside there. That was way too risky at such a corner where on the first lap you're gonna have such a sensitive car on heavy fuel. So I feel like it is a racing incident. We've not give, been given anything for it, so therefore I agree with that. And uh, so we go about this race then on this safety car restart, being trying to warm up my tyres. And then I bolt very early on the banging here and try and catch Verstappen napping, which we do successfully. And we have some decent heat into the tyres. Brakes a little bit cold into turn one. Bit wide, but get the nose turned and try and fend off Verstappen at any point. He's going to try and attack on this opening lap of the restart on lap number four. And we maintain one, two for now. But the interesting thing is, what's going to happen to De Vries? Because he's out of the position, you know. Yes, in the hands of Leclerc, that Ferrari's been pretty quick, but De Vries not as highly rated. Let's see how he fares. Can he do anything to defend against Ricardo and Bottas? 
Meanwhile, Verstappen pressurizes me. At the same corner, Lando dived down the inside of me to try and make a move. Verstappen patiently just waits behind me. So that may just be the difference in experience and racecraft in these two AI drivers. You know, Verstappen just biding his time and waiting for the right time to attack me, which may just be later on in this stint through this entire section. You guys would have known from season two how poor I am through these corners. I just can't ever get the same drive and rotation as these guys around me. And Verstappen goes for a big old dive and it's a huge lunge. He comes out of nowhere almost on the camera shot on the left hand side. We're neck and neck now. A little bit of a drift through the left hander side by side. He's just going to get that. We keep the nose in. He leaves us some space but alas we're behind. But oh massive wobble for Verstappen. He gets it wide. It's a big mistake from the Dutchman and that will allow us to get a good run and re overtake him. I was going to say maybe that move is done and dusted but no. Verstappen invites us back in with that mistake. We're on the inside of turn one trying to squeeze him out but at the same time leaving some space of course he is my teammate it is his home Grand Prix so I don't want to completely just push him out wide and leave him for dust but at the same time trying to make that move and we've made it for now but again he just comes back at us in sector two he's so good off that corner that left hander despite us using so much overtake mode he's got it done we're on the inside we force him to lock up there so we're really trying to make this as difficult as we can for Verstappen but he's still there we're now much further ahead into the last corner but he keeps it through still side by side he's still there on the outside of the banking he cuts in though now to get the slipstream the Ferrari man also behind as well as Ricardo but we live to fight for another day but a third time round and third time unlucky for us just so much understeer into this left hander no, no matter where I break what I do I just can't seem to get that this definitely is my bogey part of this circuit I just cannot do it against the AI I don't know what I need to do I need to definitely do some more practice around this circuit on those corners and Verstappen just mugs me off this time fully even though it's my two personal best lap times Verstappen is flying out there and I would be surprised if he didn't get the fast lap of the Grand Prix on this lap DRS open for us but across the line and Verstappen does indeed go purple so he is the one flying at the moment and showing that pace he really did show in Q1 and Q2 on Saturday and pretty much that will be the story now as we move on to lap number 12 Verstappen with another fast up of the Grand Prix so now that he's in clean air not behind traffic of myself or Norris at the start he's now showing his true pace this is the pace we kind of saw and um, while I was a bit worried that Ray start you know talking uh, during the strategy uh, window about you know wanting maybe some rain really because that might equalize it because he's just too quick for us at this stage of the race I don't know if that will change now going on to set of hard tires we pit in earlier than Verstappen I'm hoping for a miracle. I need to hope that I'm just godly on these hard tyres and Verstappen has an issue, but I highly doubt that, to be honest. So I think unless something else happens in this race, it may be kind of game over because Verstappen looks as dominant as he was looking at Hanoi, remember, when he just went on to dominate the entire race and uh, win, win that third round of the season. But to never say never, let's just see how it goes on the outlap here. Can we catch Magnus in here? Uh, we've been behind him now for about half a lap. This is I actually technically caught him up at the beginning of lap 15, but I haven't been able to make a move yet. So this has uh, been two red sectors for me. So not really the outlap I was looking for, to be honest, on these hard ties. As we close up now to the Dane ERS on the outside. We're gonna ooh, uh, just cut into the inside instead because I was definitely gonna get squeezed right into the wall if I kept it on the left. But into turn one, into P2. But look at the minimap. Look at the timer at the top left. Five seconds the gap is nearly or just uh, over four, sorry, uh, to Verstappen there. So he's gained about two seconds in the pit stop window, basically, with those worn softs versus my fresher hards because I got stuck by Magnussen. So lap 16, we've got 20 laps to go. Yeah, I don't know what we can do. Lap 24 then. Eight laps later. And uh, Verstappen has grown the gap to 7.3. We're still 1-2. In the meantime, Ricardo has gone and overtaken De Vries. De Vries has dropped down two positions down uh, below Bottas as well. And he's got Sainz right behind him. You see here, though, lap 25... We do set a purple lap time, so I do have the pace in the car. Like, that's not really the thing, actually, because as I finally get used to the circuit and kind of get in the zone, I've got that raw speed. I just don't have the consistent raw speed that Verstappen is showing lap after lap. Like, there's glimpses of it from me. But I'm sure with the training we've done, his AI is 100 rated, I'm sure, going into this race weekend. So he's just so... You know, on a different level, like Leclerc was at the end of Season 2, you know, when he was just alien-like, where he was getting win after win. That's exactly what we've got right now with Verstappen. Although, right now, Leclerc is out of the Grand Prix, and that may just change everything in this race. 
because for the second time in this race, the safety car's out. We haven't had a safety car in a season and a bit, and now we've got two in one race. This is very, very rare. This is very peculiar. And this is matching almost what we had in real life at the uh, Tuscan Grand Prix, minus the red flags. So we come in because there is a chance we can do something clever here. We're going to come in on the safety car, get a free pit stop, go onto a set of soft tyres, new ones also, because I checked at the bottom right because we didn't use any in Q3, remember, because it was rained out. We we're using intermediates. We've got a brand spanking new set of soft tyres to use for the remaining, you know, what, 10 laps to go in this Grand Prix. Eight by the time we come through and get on the restart. Yes, we're down to P4, but I think everyone else is going to stay out. Ricardo, Bottas, they stayed out. Verstappen was already past the pit lane, I'm pretty sure. So even if he wanted to come in, he couldn't have. He, he was too late for him. But this was it then. In the uh, exact same place, uh, the McLarens had that massive crash. Uh, Leclerc parks up there, just a mechanical failure. So such a shame then for the uh, reigning driver's champion, of course. The man with so much consistency that I talked about just then in season two. He has his first DNF in a long while for Ferrari. And that's a replay then of just showing that yeah, Verstappen indeed was basically just coming across the line or basically just too far left of the pit lane entry to come in even if he wanted to, whereas we came straight in. So here we are then, P4 on the restart and we're the only man, I think, in the top 10 that's come in. So we are on fresh softs. These guys all on worn hard. We can win this race. We can do this. And it's going to be a very good restart because we catch Valtteri just... Well, doing what he does best, just napping. And we're going to get down the inside of him to turn one. Really squeeze him out forcefully on the left-hand side and get up into P3. And now we can uh, go on and set about trying to get Ricardo who's behind me to freeze nearly attack spot at. You've got Sainz Alta recovering in this race. And also, I've just seen the minimap there. I see a dot of orange. Lando Norris, after that massive spin and being last place on lap one, I think he's back in the top ten there. Because they're just showing the pace McLaren should have been showing in this race if it wasn't for that massive issue on lap one. But uh, speaking about pace, here we are now, lap 29, two purple, second and last sectors, and we've set the new fast lap of the Grand Prix. On the outside we go of Rick Bobby in the Red Bull car, and we're up into P2 now, to 1-2 once again for our team. But now, can we swap positions with the home favourites and get first place? Well, look at that, under braking, we're so much better. The grip is there, but can we have the straight line speed, the run on the banking? Because Verstappen is very strong off this corner. A little bit wide there from me. Not on the power early enough to be honest. And we don't have too much ERS auto to play around with as we're going to end deployment just as we cross the line there. It's another fastest lap but we're not anywhere near enough to make a dive to the inside. So I don't know what we need to do. The engine you can see is overheating actually. So that's maybe why we need to cool down the engine in lean mixture to make sure we have full power. We go again. Same part of the circuit but this time Verstappen big mistake there. Like we saw earlier on the Grand Prix. Rear end steps out. We're practically pushing him through the last corner now as we come through the banking we've got the much better run now overtake mode engage DRS open rich mix the engines not overheating this time we go through to the left hand side on the outside of turn one for P1 Verstappen comes back at us with side by side for the race lead but we're gonna get it we have the better tyres and we have done it and we're up into first place now of the Dutch Grand Prix and later on in the race this is Ricardo showing some pace Verstappen's got major issues his tyres are going off and Ricardo has overtaken Verstappen for P2 in the Red Bull there. Ricardo showing some mega pace up into P2. Verstappen struggling and so will even finish on the podium. Bottas not too far behind so it looks like for now he'll stick behind Ricardo but Ricardo looking very quick on that 33 he's actually going to be the quickest man on circuit you know. The Australian now for some reason just woken up now that Red Bull car. Maybe he's doing what he did in real life. His AI's just conserved tyres like Ricardo's done so many times in real life in 2020 and has gone for a Banzai lap at the end here because he's uh, set the purple time. He's pressurising me onto the last lap of the Grand Prix. Ricardo is all over me here. Can we defend this enough? Just one more sector. We're so poor off this corner, this left-hander. I'm so worried. We've got a bit of ERS to play around with. No fuel. We're on low fuel, so we have to stay in standard and lean mixture. Ricardo round the outside. He's into the lead by nose. We go around the outside of him yet again and we get it back up into first place. Ricardo is is just about going to miss out on that. We are just going to come through for first place. But my word, have we had to work for it today. But the two-stop strategy under the safety cars worked out for us. And we are victorious at the Dutch Grand Prix. We make up for season two. And we also beat 
our home favourite teammate, Verstappen, who comes in third place after a fabulous showing by Ricardo at the end there. But what a hectic Grand Prix. Two safety cars and a battle for the race lead. Awesome stuff. There's a few disappointed faces up and down the pit wall after that one, but not here. They secured a phenomenal victory. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. So there we have it. Ricardo nearly made it five different winners in five races, but we are the first repeat winner of season three. Very happy to make amends for season two when we lost that to Sainz on the last lap. That was with the Spaniard. We beat our new teammate Verstappen. He's going to be gutted to not even get P2 there as Ricardo really good showing in that last stint. I, it literally was like watching him in real life. You know, he saved the tyres just to attack Verstappen and me at the end, but it means for the championship with Leclerc with a DNF, remember, he's down to P3. There's a big gap now to Verstappen relative to, you know, F1 uh, career mode terms. That's quite a big gap, you would say, to Verstappen in second place. So Leclerc's going to have to have some catching up to do. And uh, Red Bull, I mean, Sainz obviously had to recover in that race. So all things considered, Red Bull could have made a lot better, uh, a lot more of that race if Sainz was up there. But he had to come through. He did recover quite well, to be fair. And they have jumped Ferrari for in the, in the constructors. But it's uh, weird to see Leclerc still ahead of both of the drivers in the, in the Drivers' Championship. But that's how consistent he's been so far in the season. But uh, it's still all to play for. Of course, it's still early days, but that's a really good thing to get a second race win under our belt. You know, this time last year, we had zero race wins to our name. So it's really good to have two already with five races gone. But you've seen, you know, McLaren really should have been right up there if it wasn't for that crash. So I think we've got, in the coming races, we've got something to look forward to. We've got not only Leclerc and Ferrari, both Red Bulls, my teammate. We might even have both McLarens joining us in that fight because Lando looked bloody quick at the start before that spin on lap number one. So let's watch out for that. But a very, very entertaining race and uh, a crazy one to see. A very super rare event for us, I must say. You know, you may not agree with me for your guys' career mode save, but for me, it's been very rare to see the full core safety guard. The fact we saw it twice in one episode is bonkers because the last time we saw it, I'm pretty sure, was was Hanoi last season, unless I'm forgetting about it, but, uh, you know, it just seemed quite rare, so to have it twice was very, very odd for me uh, whilst recording, so good to see that come through. If you guys did enjoy it, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula content. I've been Aaron for I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.